Hello and welcome to another devlog. So in this video, I continue work on my latest Roblox game, The Tallest Tower. And I add this cool little plot system where I can add blocks to my plot and raise it up and make it taller. So eventually, the player that has the highest studs count will have the tallest tower and they will win the game. So in this video, I'll show you the process of making this and some other little fixes and tweaks that I made in the process. So if you enjoy, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to get in contact with me, discuss anything, or just hang out, make sure to join my Discord channel or server. Links in the description. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So the first thing I started to work on was some basic controls to allow the player to reel in and like push out the part that they're holding. And you can do this by using Q and E. So this is just a quick time lapse of me doing just that. So earlier this week, I spent a lot of time working on a component system for the client of my game where I can add and remove components from the player, which makes it really easy to implement things such as the part controller, which is a thing that allows you to pick up and grab parts. And so I just made a quick little change of the part controller that allows me to pick up parts and the distance stays the same when you pick it up and you can use Q and E to bring it forward and backwards which is pretty cool it makes building a lot easier that's for sure because I can I can like push it into the ground if I want to and then can stick which is nice and good or if I don't like that I can just you know throw a part I can pick it up throw it away you know this is this is a really intuitive building system I am actually kind of enjoying it, but that's about it. So now I got to work fixing a few little bugs that I had encountered along the way. One of which was the player being able to collide with the part that they were picking up, which allowed them to accelerate really quickly and you could basically fly. So I had to make some no collision constraints to prevent that. If you guys want a video on no collision constraints, make sure to comment down below and I will definitely do that. So while doing some testing, I came across this very interesting bug, so to speak. So, you know, I can normally grab my parts and move them around. It works fine, right? And you can also throw them, which also works fine. But if you, like, angle your mouse at the bottom of the part and, like, drag down at, like, a certain angle, you can send the part to space. And this is actually sort of the intended behavior because I'm basically just dragging the base of the part into the ground and, like, the collisions are just trying to resolve each other. And once I let go it just like flings it because it's like trying to push itself out of contact with the base plate which makes a lot of sense so i'm really not sure if i want to remove this or if i want to keep it because if you like not many people are gonna like figure this out but if you know how to do it then you can just yeet parts into space but obviously like when i'm actually building the arena there will be a roof and wall so stuff like that won't be able to go off the map but it could be you know pretty cool if you want to do something like sort of stupid but yeah. so after i resolved all of the bugs 
pertaining to the grabbing system, I started working on a system to allow the player or allow the game to create a plot for the player which will where they'll put their parts in order to make the tallest tower. And that's kind of like your zone where you want to protect it from other people, but you want to make yours as tall as possible. And I named the system the plot system, it makes a lot of sense. And right now I'm just setting up all the modules to allow me to control everything with the player. And you can see my use of getters and setters a lot where I do like, you know, plot manager, get plots or like get player. And the reason I'm using this is because it works a lot better with the type system than just referencing a table value directly, which allows me to access like autocomplete for that since I can tell the function what it can return. But yeah. So I finished the beginnings and the framework of my plot system. So you can he see here when I spawn in, I get my own plot, which is this little square, and I can control parts. And this is what would happen at the start of the game. And what you just saw there, the game ended, my plot got destroyed, and now I can no longer pick up parts. And the cool thing about this system that I'm using is it's all like a reusable framework so every time the game starts and finishes we can use these functions end and start which is all the way up here to start and end our game and we also have a new function so we'll call this new function every iteration of the game so that our player or that our whole game stays fresh and just because a server lives long doesn't mean stuff will get broken which is exactly what we want so okay so i think i've basically finalized the plot system in this game you can see i added this nice little display that says my name and then the studs is tall right now it's 1.0 because this little platform right here that counts towards the height of our platform so you can see when I bring this in, when I drop the part onto the plot, it turns a different color. That's just for debug. We won't leave that. And this little label, it moves up physically, and it also changes the number to two. And you can see when I'm adjusting it on my platform, it discards it because I don't want the, pay the player to be able to do something like this, like at the end of the game. They just like shove the part up into the sky and it counts towards your overall count. We don't want that. So you can see I can just build a little tower and we can make it pretty tall. Maybe I can even get one of these. If I can angle it properly. Yeah, no, I screwed up. And you can see it just adjusts a little bit. I can't prevent it from adjusting like up and down as stuff's falling. I guess I could detect the velocity but for right now it's fine. I think one common issue though is when you take a part and like throw it, you can see temporarily it changes to a higher value. But that should be a pretty simple fix. I guess I could just check for the velocity in each part. But for right now this works pretty well. I'm very happy with this system. So the next thing I have to do, which I'll probably do in the next devlog is Make every player have a plot, and make the game loop and the arena and all the parts spawning. So yeah. And that's about it for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to comment any suggestions or questions. If you want any tutorials, make sure to tell me that as well. And make sure to also comment if you guys like these devlogs or if you want more tutorials because I'm open to do whatever. I just like to use these devlogs because they keep me on track as well as giving you guys an insight as to how I actually develop my games. So it's good for me. It could be good for some of you. Just let me know your opinions on them in general. And you can do that via comments. You can also join my Discord server, which is in the description. But other than that, I hope you guys have a nice day and goodbye.